just like with angles, there can be multiple representations of the exact same point. So, 4 pi over 2, okay, pi over 2, you start right here. Radius of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. If we plot negative 4, 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 is right here. The negative radius sends us through the axis, so we end up in the exact same place. They look slightly related. Hopefully, looking at those, you, you can tell they may have something in common because they're over the same denominator and they have the same radius, just opposite signs. You may not be able to, to tell right off the bat, oh, those are the same points. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is you can have two points that look different, but actually plot to the exact same place. Okay, so I put the note there. It's kind of like coterminal angles. They're different representations, but the points are in the same place. So just like with negative 315 and positive 45. Different angles, but really they're actually the exact same angle. They just have different names. Okay, now here is the meat of what we're going to look at um, for today. That you can convert between polar and rectangular coordinates. Okay, In the polar system, we have the pole that corresponds to the origin in the rectangular system. Uh, in the polar system, we have the polar axis. In the rectangular system, that's the same thing as the positive x-axis. So if we have this point out here that corresponds to a theta and a radius, let's, th let's label this like we would in the rectangular system. Okay, This distance right here is your x. This uh, vertical distance is your y. So... That created a right triangle, right? You should be used to seeing this after all the stuff that we've done with trig, that when you have a point, you can create a right triangle out of that. So, based on this fact, you've got a right triangle, x and y are your legs, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, so that's a relationship between rectangular, polar, okay, the rectangular's on the left side, the polar's on the right side. If we were to set up trig, our trig ratios, and these are the same as they have been the entire time. Sine is the y over the radius, cosine is the x over the radius, tangent is the y over x. Nothing has changed there, so you don't really have anything new to learn. You just got to remember that you can apply that. So if you rearrange them, it's the exact same stuff that we were just doing with vectors, right? With the y coordinate is r times the sine of the angle, the x coordinate is r times the cosine of the angle. The angle can be found using the inverse tangent of the y over x. That's why this kind of flows pretty naturally right after we do vectors. The exact same stuff, just new application of it. Okay? So let's apply that. We're going to convert these points from polar form to rectangular form. Okay? We're going to convert these points from polar to rectangular. So we need to recognize that 2 is our r, theta is 3 pi over 2. So our x coordinate is the radius times the cosine of the angle. What's the value of the cosine of 3 pi over 2 from the unit circle? Uh, mm. Zero? Yeah. Yeah? 3 pi over 2 is oh, right yeah, here, yeah. so the x would be zero. So the x-coordinate of this point would be 0. The y is 2 times the sine of the angle. What is the sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Negative 1. So the y-coordinate would be negative 2. So the point in the polar system, 2, 3 pi over 2, is the same as the point 0, negative 2 in the rectangular system. And if you think about it, we just graphed the polar, so 3 pi over 2 is right here. A radius of 2 would put it right here. Well, rectangularly, that's on the y-axis, so the x-coordinate 0, and it's at the point negative 2. Okay? Let's do negative 8 pi over 3. Negative 8 is the radius, pi over 3 is the angle, so the x-coordinate is negative 8 
times the cosine of pi over 3. You've got to know that unit circle, guys. So what is the cosine of pi over 3? Mm -hmm. So pi over 3 is the steeper angle, so the x is less than the y. That's how I remember it. So the x coordinate of this point would be negative 4. The y coordinate, negative 8 sine of pi over 3. That value is the square root of 3 over 2. So we simplify the 8 over 2. That gives us negative 4 times the square root of 3. And we leave it in that form. Bless you. So the rectangular point is negative 4 negative 4 square roots of 3. And what quadrant is that in? Third. Third. Negative x, negative y is third quadrant. Think about the polar. Pi over 3 is in the first, but it has a negative radius, so it would shoot it into the third quadrant. Okay. So, first thing that you've got to do, and this is important to make sure that you end up in the right quadrant, you need to plot the point um, that they give you, the x and the y. You find your radius using that relationship, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and you find your uh, theta by using that relationship with tangent, okay? So let's do one where we know the x coordinate is negative 1, so we're either in the second or the third. The y coordinate is the square root of 3, which is a little bit more than 1, but less than 2, so that means we're in the second quadrant, so we're about right there is the point that we're talking about. Okay, but the important thing is to establish that this is in quadrant two. So this is x, this is y. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Negative one squared is one. The square root of three squared is three. One plus three is four. So that means our radius is two. Theta is equal to, let me use a different color, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. I suggest you in degree mode. You don't want to be in radian mode. It's going to give you a really great answer, so let's go with degrees. Bless you. The inverse tangent, although we should know this one because it's where is the tangent equal to the square root of 3. That's on the unit circle, but we'll roll with it. Okay, that gives us negative 60 degrees. Is that in the second quadrant? No. No, that is in the fourth quadrant. So that is our reference angle. 60 degrees is right here. So what angle are we really talking about? Uh, 120. 120. Okay, so this point in polar form is 2. 120 degrees. Now, one way you could check it really quick is to do 2 cosine of the angle. That should give you your x. 2 sine of the angle, that should give you the y. Okay, obviously it's not going to spit out the square root of 3 for you. You just need to confirm those are the same thing. Okay, so that's an easy way to check. Let's look at negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 0 is on the negative x-axis. Negative 2, 0 is on the negative x-axis. <clears throat> so, do we really have to go through all this process to figure out r and theta? Can we kind of think through this a little bit? What would be our radius? 2. Okay. What would be our angle? 180. Now, you got a couple of possibilities. You could also say, um, let's say we do 2. You could, it's also negative 180. You could also do, if I said the radius was negative 2, what would my angle need to be? Mm, think about that. If I said the radius was negative 2, what would the angle have to be? Zero. Or... What's, what angle is the same as zero? 360? Or negative 360. Okay, or negative 360. 
There are a bunch of different possibilities here. Okay, there are a bunch of different possibilities. Now, this, the first one that we listed, is preferable because that's the simplest, most straightforward. Okay, but I just wanted to mention there are several different ways that we could express that same answer. Okay, all right, let's do one more and then I'll let the college people go. Okay, um, two, two square roots of three. So which quadrant are we in? First. Well, that's nice. Isn't it? Okay, we don't have to worry too much about it. 2 times square root of 3 would be a little bit more than 3, because the square root of 3 is like 1.7. So 2 times that would be about 3.4. All right, so x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. 2 squared is 4. If you square something like the 2 square root of 3, you have to square the 2 and you square the square root of 3. So that's really 4 times 3. So that's 4 plus 12, that's 16. So our radius is 4. Let's find our angle. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the y over the x. Well, guess what? That's what we just did a second ago. Because the 2's cancel, so it's the square root of 3, which means theta is 60. Okay, it would be positive this time because it's positive square root of 3. Okay, and we're in the first quadrant, so we can stick with the 60. Again, you can check this. These are very easy to check by plugging the radius times the cosine of the angle to confirm that that's your x, the radius times the sine of the angle to confirm that that is your y. You just have to check and make sure that that is 2 times square root of 3 and it is. Okay, so this is what we...